I want to welcome you to the next episode of the Plugged In podcast. And today we have Igor Kursic. Igor is the Chief Technology Officer for Ver Verica. Great to have you on today's Plugged In, Igor. How are you? Good. Really, really excited to be here. Thanks for my invitation, Mark. Absolutely. Now, obviously, whenever I come across somebody like yourself, I always kind of like to find out a little bit about uh, the backstory here. And, and I know that you're very creative. You like to solve problems. You're all, also very conscious of actually uh, wanting to improve the way that people live and you you care about change to the world. But where does your creative edge come from, Igor? Where, where do you think that that really manifests itself in your life? Oh, that's a good question. I think it comes from actually family and friends. And uh, I really like to be social and uh, I'm empowered actually by this and uh, the culture and the people. Yeah. And was there somebody specifically in your family? Was it a parent or was it a grandparent? For me, my grandfather was very influential on, on my uh, entrepreneurial kind of flair. Yeah, it's my uncle, actually. He mm. was... He was an entrepreneur and inventor, so yeah, it kind of drove me into into engineering and yeah, all of this. And in terms of where does your care or why do you care so much about making a positive change in the world? Because I know that's very rooted within you as well. Yeah, that's that's a good question. Essentially, I'm a kind of a <laughs> altruist, uh, and I would like to actually help. People evolve, and I mean, technology evolves so we can actually live in better and equalized society. I mean, it sounds like a cliche, but it's it's rather it's rather what drives me. So mm. I'm looking for uh, uh, this in, in technology. And some people are embracing technology, and some people are still afraid of it. They still want to run away from it. They feel like it's going to replace uh, you know, their livelihood rather than actually looking at how it can actually improve their opportunity. What's your message to those that are still resistant towards AI and technology? Well, that's, a, that's a good one. It's a good question. So, yeah, everybody's trying to answer it on their way. And uh, that way, for example, even my wife is implicated. She's a doctor. So everybody's thinking about it. I think um, the the AI... Uh, the optimistic way of looking at the, the AI is actually helping to solve the problem. It's it's at the end tool uh, for contextual usage. So the real context come come from the the human, and uh, without that, I, I don't think there is could be fully autonomous system. Yeah, I think that. I mean, you mentioned about your wife being a doctor. I know when my dad had knee surgery, they used the the virtual. Uh, technology glasses so that while they're like drilling a hole in his knee he's swimming in the Maldives for example and that's where you see technology actually starting to work alongside medicine uh, and rather than it being something that needs to be a threat it can actually help the whole experience which fundamentally business needs to solve a problem regardless of what it is whether it's a service or a product you know, and that's kind of where we need to see the opportunities. Exactly. We need to have more time for creative thinking. That's where AI will help us, actually. Okay, do, so what does Ver Verica mean and what role is your company playing within the AI landscape? Ver uh, Verica essentially uh, comes from a word play or where it's a, a squirrel uh, in, I think, uh, one of the... I think Slovakian language, and uh, the squirrel is essentially coming from uh, the context of uh, we being the original creators of Apache Flink. Uh, Flink is a, a German uh, word for fast, and it's connected to squirrel because Berlin is full of squirrels, and this is where the technology stands from. So this is the history of Verica, of course. Where do we play uh, in the real-time AI? So essentially what's happening now, uh, nobody actually care about the streaming so much and, and fast processing data, but now this AI is actually opening a paradigm shift because 
we go from real-time analytics uh, to real-time AI, essentially. So, so now it's about not about the yesterday data, but the data has to adapt continuously. Now, this is something that uh, cannot be understated that uh, you real-time AI, and this is where our streaming platform uh, is the foundation of, of that and technology, uh, needs to respond instantly to anomalies, opportunities, or user needs. And not only that is basically to predict. And you cannot predict if you don't have uh, quality data and continuously actually looping and talking with the AI, real-time AI ecosystem. So yeah, basically we, we, we found ourselves that we are foundation in order to fuel this real-time AI. Mm. Now, the financial sector isn't known for speed, uh, yet real-time risk detection is becoming non-negotiable. What's changed in the last 12 months, Igor? Yeah, that's... That's a good one. Um, it's definitely one word, the regulation, I would say. And uh, this is, this was essentially, traditionally, finance sector has not been known for speed, uh, especially for the risk detection. It looks that it's, it has been changed, but uh, we have had a couple of cases like Mongo, Monzo got fined for anti-money laundering, Revolut 2 as well. So, and they got fined for 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 something that were not new incidents. So, essentially, new regulations are appearing to to regulate this. So now it's a mandate for finance sector, like uh, under BCB S two hundred and thirty, it's like Basel Committee on Banking Supervision. So, it's a regulation that is now mandatory and required for for finance sector, and this is where the the whole game changes so you need to comply and in order to comply uh, uh for this regulation for the uh, real-time ai comes in so uh, we are seeing some pressure across the industry industry and it's about trust finance and getting uh, risk detection and responding to threats as they happen okay. so this is this is what the regulation is enforcing so there could be no no laundering issues, uh, anti-money laundering issues and stuff. Eagle, can you walk through how a company like Booking.com uses the Verica, your company, in the risk workflows? How, how, does, that, how does that look? Yeah, uh, yeah, one of our best customers, I would say. Uh, well, fraud exists everywhere as well than in this kind of platforms like Booking. So they... They have a SaaS software as a service offering, and they have a lot of platform and vendors they 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 need to accommodate that, of course, right? Uh, so they are handling this vast number of uh, different vendors and uh, partners, and internally uh, they they have to have a security as a service model where they meet and and detect the threat services very fast. Now, as they were expanding, of course this. This became an issue. So with our platform, uh, they started using Apache Flink, but with our platform, they were able to do it in time and in scale. Uh, they needed internally to reduce this uh, essentially security service uh, surface uh, risk. Uh, so yeah, mitigating this fraudulent usage. So like double charging and stuff like that. So in order to do it confidently in scale, uh, in the, in the scale they needed, this is where we came in. And would you say that's like the biggest offering you have for your clients is a, is along this line uh, of support and making sure that um, risks are reduced through your technology? Yeah. Well, one of many use cases uh, is the uh, yeah risk assessment and 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 uh, risk analysis, of course. But uh, yeah, a lot of banks are also uh, using this. But there are many more use cases that we uh, that we expose and yeah provide and do you have obviously because technology is so fast paced and like blink and you'll miss it in terms of like your own vision within the role that you play with 
for Verica. What what's up your sleeve next? What are you developing at the moment that you're excited about? That's going to also bring uh, a much needed solution to to real life problems for businesses. Yeah. So like okay, going back to regulations, I think one of the the key points is being everywhere. Uh, especially with the real-time AI, to have a deployment model that is meeting customers where they are, for example, whether it's on-premise, uh, essentially in air-gapped environments, or bring your own cloud, or your standard uh, fully managed cloud or software as a service. So uh, we are working into covering our multi-cloud and being everywhere offering uh, with bring your own cloud that is pretty young. Uh, offering, but also expanding multi-cloud, so being everywhere uh, that we are working uh, and expanding this portfolio. And I think more more exciting is uh, working on the agentic AI stories, contributing on the Flink agents and uh, working with LinkedIn uh, and, and others uh, to actually contribute to the community. We can, we can develop, uh, uh, contribute this to open source so we can incorporate it in our products. So, yeah. So it sounds like you're you're very forward thinking as well. And and is it something that you know you believe that you're going to be involved in technology for the rest of your life? Is it something that really like resonates with you and, and keeps you hungry? Uh, absolutely. But um, I would say it's. Yes, the te technology is there, uh, but I think that the most important thing is also to see it from the, the user perspective, solving the real problems. Yeah, the technology is essentially nothing without a use case or or a, or a product that can use it. So I think what excites me, it's yes, the technology, but also how it's used and how it's evolving. Because I'm like 22 years an engineer, so. It's interesting how everything is evolving to to meet actually different demands as they go, including the the agentic AI, for example. And do you have any frustrations yourself with with the work that you do? Is is this something that's kind of a a continual uh, pain in the side, so to speak? Yeah, not enough time. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's uh, it's actually balancing uh, always balancing enterprise. Uh, and quality with with uh, innovation, and uh, you are we are basically meeting the our customers are really enterprise customers, banking sector, large banks. So you always have to you have to actually uh, put forward something that may sound boring, like security and quality and such, in front of innovation sometimes. So it's it's a bit balanced. So it can be it can be a challenge sometimes for. A technology officer. <laughs> mm. And as we bring this uh, interview into land, uh, Igor, is there anything burning that you that you really want to mention or share? Uh, burning <laughs> in a negative way or a positive way? In a good way, you know, that, you know, something within you that you feel like we really need to capture, that people need to know. I think uh, uh, I would say that the the misconception of actually real-time AI is something that I I feel that people don't understand actually what the real AI, real-time AI is because on the back end, and we are not aware of this, is that a lot, lot of processes are still batch-oriented. So my learning problem is always to explain that, that the streaming first approach essentially and the continuous processing of data is yet to emerge. So people think that it's on the way, but uh, the freshness and and the instancy of the data is not there yet. So we this is always uh, kind of frustrating. So <laughs> in order to explain to, to every everybody that where we fit, like as we're very kind of streaming first. Yeah, I understand that. How do people find out more about you, Igor, and Verica? Where do where do people go? Yeah, well, you can go to verica.com, obviously, and um, on the LinkedIn, always available. Uh, email me, ping me. Uh, yeah, and this is 
you can get in touch with our salespeople as well and uh, our product marketing. I think we're, we are we are very present uh, on the events as well. So you can check it out on our site. Yeah, I think it's so important, you know, that in business, when we're in a company that we really do make ourselves as human as and as accessible as possible, I think that's one of the, the most negative hits that AI technology gets is the fact because it's bypassing that human connection and, and how actually we need to make sure that we're doing we're using AI as a way to service and not replace and I think that's really important to have that human that human connection but allowing AI to make our lives better rather mm -hmm. than to actually remove that human connection yeah, exactly I mean I think the the video context per se just in face-to-face -face context it's irreplaceable essentially all the communication and that's that's the thing uh the human interaction cannot be replaced by a prompt ai because we we have so much more contextually when we communicate and that's should not be neglected and should be basically strived to the now communication is more like digital and and maybe there is a fear but i think the this face-to-face uh, -face, video context and cultural context and everything that we do cannot be cannot be really mimicked and, and replaced honestly exactly it's just a human demand how we communicate yeah well Igor it's been a uh, great to have you on today's plugged in podcast and look forward to seeing you go from strength to strength thank you so much thank you for having me mark